I'm Dr. Philip Talakis, President and CEO of Cernova Corp. Cernova is a publicly traded clinical stage regenerative medicine therapeutics company. Type 1 diabetes is our first clinical application, and we have an active phase two clinical trial ongoing at the University of Chicago that I will be speaking about today. In addition, we have two other programs that we have strong proof of concept data preclinically. These include hemophilia A, which is a chronic bleeding disorder in patients, and also hypothyroid disease. And this is a treatment for patients that are having their thyroid gland removed and have to be on chronic medications every day for the rest of their lives. Our approach involves a three technologies that we put together in a very simple kind of approach. The first is a cell pouch, which is a medical device about three quarters the size of a business card that is placed deep under the skin and it forms an organ-like environment for therapeutic cells after a couple of weeks. We then place therapeutic cells, which then release proteins and hormones as required to treat disease. So your body is now able to produce the required proteins and hormones to treat the disease rather than having to take these by injection. Our cells are also protected from immune system attack using our technology. With respect to our patent portfolio, because we are interested in licensing our technologies to global pharmaceutical companies, we have global patents for all of our technologies. Our pipeline consists of three applications. One is for type 1 diabetes. The second one is for hemophilia A. And the third one is for benign thyroid disease. And as I had mentioned, we have an active phase two clinical trial at the University of Chicago that is ongoing. With respect to the market opportunities, we have an approach whereby we first are working with human donor cells because they are known to already work in the body. And we place these into our cell pouch and that can provide safety and efficacy. The market is relatively small. And so what we have done as we're moving forward is that we have stem cell derived technologies to provide an unlimited supply of cells as we move through our technologies in our next generation. And this can provide us up to a $25 billion market for the diabetes application alone. With respect to the competitive landscape, there are a number of companies that are working in this area, but Cernova is the most advanced. How do we know this? First of all, we have to prove that our device is safe in humans and that we can provide the proper organ-like environment for therapeutic cells. And we have done this in the clinic. No other company has done this. Secondly, we have to be able to show for the diabetes application that we can get insulin into the bloodstream. And this is measured by a biomarker called C-peptide. And Cernova is the only company in the world that has proven this also. And of course, we have to have our local immune protection technologies to protect our cells. And we're showing that our cells are surviving long term in the body. With respect to the financial metrics, however, um, our, our market cap is significantly lowered than other uh, US compatriots. And importantly, that provides a huge opportunity for Canadian investors. So the reality of diabetes and I think we all know this, is that there are over 400 million people worldwide. And 10% of these people have type 1 diabetes. In fact, while we're focusing on type 1 diabetes initially, we're looking at the entire population of diabetes to be able to be treated with our product. And we're looking for a functional cure. So what does this mean? So for 100 years, patients have been taking injections of insulin multiple times a day, either through a needle or a pump. And our goal is to eliminate the need for these patients to take injections by allowing their bodies to be able to have the cells that produce insulin appropriately again. What have we achieved? So Cernova has been working on this a long time. We have conducted a phase one or an initial study in Canada and shown the device to be successful in terms of safe and the cells able to survive and be able to produce insulin 
in a small number of patients. We then moved on and started to work with the University of Chicago with a luminary physician, Dr. Witowski, and we put together a clinical protocol that was cleared by the FDA and funded by the Juvenile Diabetes Association um, to work on safety and efficacy of this product. With respect to our study design, this is an open label study in patients. And the primary objective is safety. The secondary objective are a number of efficacy characteristics. These include survival of endocrine tissue in the cell pouch, so survival of the islets, a proportion of subjects with reduction in severe hypoglycemic events. And what is important here is that we're working with patients that have um, no ability to be able to de detect when their insulin levels have dropped to a very dangerous level. And we're also looking at a proportion of reduction of HbA1c, which is an indicator of long-term control of blood sugar levels. And furthermore, we have 20 additional endpoints that we are uh, reviewing. Importantly, we have some additional initial safety uh, indications in our device. And as you remember, this is the primary endpoint. So we have no incidence of adverse events due to the cell pouch. Cell pouch has been well tolerated by patients and the cell pouch is well incorporated with vascularized tissue, meaning that when we put the therapeutic cells in, we have demonstrated definitively that the device is highly vascularized and forms that required organ-like environment. So this is very, very positive for uh, the initial uh, aspects of our study. Furthermore, early findings have shown that we have been able to demonstrate increases of blood levels of C-peptide, which as you remember is proof that our cells in our device are producing insulin. In addition, we're also able to show insulin in the bloodstream, both under fasting conditions, as well as when the patient is given a uh, glucose dose. Now, does it really matter that we're getting insulin to the bloodstream? And what we have shown in addition, that the answer is yes. So we've shown reduction of hemoglobin A1C. We've shown a reduction in need of insulin by the patient by approximately 50%. And extremely importantly, we've shown a 75% reduction in severe hypoglycemic unaware events. This is really important because a severe hypoglycemic event in these patients can actually result in death of the patient. So our product is already showing early on that we're able to improve quality of life of patients and the ability of them to survive these episodes. If we look a little bit closer at some of the data, what we're finding is that the patients are improved in other ways. So here we have been provided by Medtronic gluc continuous glucose monitoring systems. So that means that we're able to measure uh, blood sugar levels in patients before cell pouch and islets and after at various time points. And if you look at the top graph, you can see daily tracing, tracings um, of the control patient. And in the shaded green area is where you want your blood sugar levels to go. And importantly, what we see in this patient is that we're seeing continuous uh, levels below where they should be. So these are the hypoglycemic underwear events. When we uh, insert cell pouch and islets in the bottom graph, you can see that the patient on the lower end is staying within the green band, which is really important. So this is a considerable improvement in uh, the control of blood sugar levels in, this, in these patients. In addition, we also have a look um, by removing a small device that we call a sentinel device that has islets in it. And we have these reviewed by an independent pathologist. And what are we showing here? We've shown that the islets are surviving and you can see in red, uh, which is stain for insulin production. This is within our device. You see very healthy islets and green stain for blood vessels. And, and so what the physician had found is that um, the 
the cells in the device are surviving and functioning. So if you put all of these things together, we're able to get surviving cells. Cells are producing insulin into the bloodstream and it matters to the patient so far. Our first in human study showed uh, safety of the device. And you can see, we see uh, very, very similar types of uh, cells with blood vessels around them within the cell pouch. With respect to our Hemophilia A program, this is a $10 billion orphan indication. And we had a 5.6 million euro grant that we worked on with a team of academic investigators. And what we did with this is that we were able to take samples of patients' blood um, that have hemophilia A and then isolate cells that we corrected for the gene factor eight. We then put these cells into our cell pouch in preclinical models of hemophilia A and we were able to correct the issue with clotting. With respect to our thyroid disease program, there are approximately 150,000 patients a year having their thyroid gland removed. Without your thyroid gland, you cannot survive. So these patients have to take drugs every single day for the rest of their lives. This is about a $2 billion market opportunity. And here, what we're doing is taking some of the thyroid tissue that is healthy from the patient, and we're able to in place that into the cell pouch itself and we've shown in preclinical models that we can recover the survival of the tissue within our device and that we can also get uh, hormone levels in the bloodstream, which is a very positive first step towards the clinic. As we're moving forward, our goal is to continue to work on our uh, clinical study for type 1 diabetes. And our plan is to complete enrollment of the study in 2020 or 2000, early 21, and continue to be able to uh, produce data in this data in the study. In addition, we're going to be advancing our hemophilia A program through further preclinical studies towards the clinic and also our thyroid program into the clinic. We have a very experienced management team, all of who have approximately 20 years of experience in this field. And the key factor here is that CERNOVA has all of the, all of the uh, competency needed to be able to develop this uh, combination product.